Yeah, they've even found it in infant baby formula and frozen yeah. vegetables. Mm -hmm. and, and mother's uh, milk, you know. Uh, do you think it could pass from mother to fetus? Yes, not the fetus, it's passed through, through the baby, through almost simply through the milk. Yeah. And it has been cultured from breast milk uh, of uh, women with Crohn's, so I think that may be just the same as it is in cattle. Okay. Well, um, the thing that we can talk in general terms is that we believed that patients are missing out on a worthwhile therapy because the uh, current medical thinking is still so far behind. And we went through this whole process with Helicobacter back in 83, 84, where my mentors and my professors, who were all wrong at that time looking back, uh, were highly critical of us using antibiotics to treat ulcer disease. And it's interesting that ulcer disease is an infection uh, that affects the stomach and the first part of the duodenum and ends up with ulceration, stricturing, bleeding, perforation. And Crohn's is an infection of the other end of the small bowel, which ends up with bleeding, stricturing, and ulceration. And it's so obvious that, that Crohn's is just like it in cattle in Yoni's disease, just a chronic infection. And even though it's a proven cause of Crohn, even Crohn's, even though there are so many multiple papers, that there is enormous difficulty of of changing one's belief that the earth is not flat anymore but it's round now and actually takes a new generation of gastroenterologists as it did with Helicobacter, nearly 20 years it took to take up this, this new concept um, so I think that's that's how long it's going to take with maps so we decided that the only way uh, that we're going to get um, uh, belief is to is to get the product on the market so we started raising some money uh, to get an IND approved by the FDA which has now happened and we are now uh, in the process of finalizing the raising of the funds to do pivotal trials in Europe and in US and we hope that um, once the product is on the market uh, which is what happened with um, triple therapy when we got that on the market or the Helidac back in early 90s, um, that the physicians will have no difficulty believing because um, the proof in physicians' minds is not Cox postulates, it's whether the FDA has approved it. Mm -hmm. As soon as the FDA has approved the product, uh, most of my gastroenterologist friends will say it's proven. But of course it's not proven by the FDA. The FDA only approves the safety and efficacy of a drug. They may not know what the mechanism is, but as long as it's safe and efficacious, you can market it and sell it to patients. And so that is the system of thinking in our world. That's where I think it will go. How, what's the timeline for the trials? Oh, I, I can't predict that, depending when the funding finalizes, but I would expect by 2012 it will be on every market. Mm -hmm. And it has, uh, it has improved side effect profile as well as improved delivery? Dosing. Uh, you're referring to the Pharma presentation. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, the um, the new product will be a single capsule containing rifabutin, clofazamine, and clarithromycin, and it will come in smaller capsules so that children can use it, and we can use up a ramping up dosing, and different body mass patients can take different doses as, as is appropriate for them. And the interesting thing is that when we did uh, PK pharmacokinetic studies in in uh, normal people the bioavailability of the medications exceeds and is better then that if they're taken separately. Uh, we, we think it's the, the carrier molecules that we put in in the various studies that we did. So yes, we're looking, looking forward to having a product on the market that will uh, complement the current products. Um, maybe back, the, the current <coughs> day symptoms, every, I'm sure every patient would want to know what you know, is it you wake up, go to the washroom, forget about it for the day, or is it uh, what? What's the, the day's symptoms like today? Yeah, the routine. Yeah, not a normal person. You get up, I go to the washroom. Uh, normal patterns. You know, like don't you don't think about what happened 12, 15 years ago. We don't have washrooms in this country. <laughs> well, no, we have toilets. Toilets. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we call it toilets, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's language. Yeah.
Or yes. Like a, normal, like a normal person. Yeah. yeah. No, no different. No urgencies. No. no. It's great. Yeah. Um, Mind you, not everybody is going to be terrific. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we should address that issue. Yeah. Because I would estimate that around 10 to 15 percent of patients who have seen this initially improve, and for reasons unclear to us, either that we hit a resistant strain or they have a coexisting colitis, which is a real entity, um, they're not going to be out of the woods and they'll have to have combined medications with other uh, immunosuppressants and five ASA compounds. But it certainly still elevates the, the quality of life uh, when a combination uh, with antimap therapies is, is uh, applied to these patients. Um. Well, that's, that's sort of leading into the next question. For those who don't respond well to the Anymap, is it because they don't have a MAP infection or because they have um, sort of that genetic predisposition that predisposes them to the infection in the first place? Um, or, or is there other reasons? Well, most of what I'm going to say we don't know the answers to. And that, that'll come with, with the development of science later when, when the medications are used more widely. Um, but the genetic predisposition, this is my current understanding and view, is probably present in most patients with Crohn's so that they're unable to, to rid themselves of intracellular infection, the palsy microbial infection, where there are a very small number of bugs but a huge inflammatory response. Um, the, um, the second question is, does everybody with Crohn's have MAP? And although on blood testing, around 50% are said to be positive. If you do resected specimens, although this may be a different group, closer to 90% to carry map. The next question arises, well, could this be caused by some other chronic infection, such as Mycobacterium avium or Eremonas, and that's a real possibility. Uh, there are so many different bacteria that, that are probably still inside us, and we don't know about them, like the recent uh, coronary artery disease and chlamydophilia, for example that I think there's more to be found than we, we know. And that's really what's going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, well, often cited as a reason against MAPS involvement in the cause of the antibiotics trials that, that don't necessarily produce um, perfect results. Um, why do some trials succeed whereas others fail, quote unquote? Can you quote which which ones you're specifically referring to? You're talking uh, antibiotic therapies? Yeah, well, I guess it might be just getting into, um, you know, what were the mistakes done in the past and, and drawing yeah. conclusions from using the antibiotics that, that weren't intracellular or weren't okay. actually able to... Well, target. firstly, trials don't disprove causality. That's one thing that has to be clear. Uh, causality is proven by Cox posture. That's, that's an open, closed, shut case straight away. So if you're talking causality, it's proven, full stop. Okay? You can't fight science like that. You know? If you say gravity doesn't exist, we'll be saying the same sort of thing. Um, there are, there are, uh, there are uh, large numbers of examples of trials that have treated MAP with, bug, with drugs that don't work against MAP, and they have all failed. The only uh, trial that has used it, the RCT trial, has shown a 66% remission, which is the highest remission, much higher than any anti-TNF alpha trials have ever shown. And they go on response rather than remission to start with. So I think the data is in and it's strong. Um, what we do need is better drugs, better combinations of drugs, and a larger number of people using them so we can learn better which patients are more appropriate for, for the antibiotics which are. So in that uh, randomized controlled trial in Australia, they, they was highly criticized. Might it have had even better results had, had they used the higher dosages? Because I, I think some of the drugs were actually half dose yeah. and, and, and even... Well, that trial had a lot of warts. Let's put it this way. Firstly, it was designed very badly there should not have been an initial use of steroids, but like every other trial, oh, yeah. just bring the patients to response and remission. And response is now measured as a drop of Crohn's disease activity index by 100 or more points and remission down to below 150. 